Hey guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the Tarot of the Divine Deck and Guidebook by Yoshi Yoshitani. This is a deck that I stumbled upon online and is completely gorgeous, and that's why I wanted to do a quick walkthrough for it. It is inspired by deities, folklore, and fairy tales from around the world, and there is a corresponding book that goes along with it if you are just interested in the art, but I did want to show you the full deck, and I keep putting this video off, but I want to use this deck, shuffle it up and everything, and cleanse it and start using it, so I need to get this done. As you can see, this is the beautiful box that it does come in, which is gorgeous and stunning. I will actually link the artist's and designer's website down below so you can buy one for yourself if you're interested. So when you receive the deck, there is a Tarot of the Divine guidebook. And this just includes some basic information about tarot, some various spreads using the cards and different meanings, just very basic information. But it does include the full color art, and then it goes into all of the cards, again in full color, and what fairy tales they are from, and then very basic information about what the cards mean. And then you do get down to the cards. So here are the backs of the cards, and these cards are a very sturdy, I don't know if they're cardstock, but they are very sturdy paper. And I'll walk you through the designs. So for the Fool, we have the Little Mermaid, which is a Danish fairy tale. This is really great because this card represents beginnings, possibilities, some impulsiveness, free spirit. Then we have the Magician. This is the Fairy Godmother. This is from a French fairy tale. Then we have the High Priestess, and this is actually Scheherazade, which comes from Turkey and is an Arabic folktale. Again, I'm reading this from the guidebook, so if there's any incorrect information, I just want to let you know this is directly from the guidebook. But I love this card as well because Scheherazade is one of my favorite folktales myths and this is a card about wisdom, intuition, dreams. I love Scheherazade. Then we have the Empress and this is Our Lady of Guadalupe from Mexico and this is a Catholic saint. Then we have the Emperor, who is actually King Arthur, which originates from Britain and is a Celtic legend. Then for the Hierophant, we have White Buffalo Woman, who's from North Dakota, and that's a Lakota deity. For the Lovers, we actually have Beauty and the Beast, which is a Danish fairy tale, but the artist did use Chinese inspiration and art style for this. But I love this Lovers card as a Beauty and the Beast fan. Then for the Chariot, we have the Three Princesses of White Land, which is a Norwegian fairy tale. I love the use of animals in this deck as well. Then for Stray we have Tam Lin, which is a Scottish fairy tale. I also plan on reading up on the different fairy tales that are corresponding with the cards as part of my additional tale research and kind of using those archetypes from the fairy tales as far as what I'm learning in my intuition and everything. Then for the Hermit, I also really love this card. This is Druid and the White Stag, and this is from Celtic legend in Ireland. I love this card. I love the imagery of the forest and the White Stag. Then for the Wheel of Fortune, we have Anansi from Ghana. That's an Akan mythology. That this is an Akan god, I believe, and I love this card as well. Love the web. For justice, and forgive my pronunciations because there are not any pronunciation guides in here, but this is Amhaneg Iosa, which is a Korean legend. Then for the Hanged Man, we have Sleeping Beauty, which is an Italian fairy tale. Then for the Death Card, we have White Bear King Valmon, which is a Norwegian fairy tale. Next we have Temperance, which I will try my best here. Bodhisattva Avokite Sharva? I apologize because I know that is not good pronunciation. And this is from India, and that is a Buddhist god. Then for the devil card, it's Boitata, which is a Brazilian mythology. I also really like this card. I like this like forest theme that are in a lot of the cards. And for the dreaded tower card, we have Rapunzel, which is a German fairy tale, and I love this. They're falling out of the tower, lightning striking, her hair is going on the side, the briars are in the bottom. This is beautiful. I wouldn't want to get this card, but it's a very pretty card. Then for the star, this is Sister Alanushka and Brother Ivanushka, which is a Russian fairy tale with a little lamb. Very stunning. I mean, look at like the flowers in the background. So pretty. Then the moon is the title card from the box, and that is Princess Kaguya, which is a Japanese fairy tale. But we have these little like raccoon-like creatures on the side, the big moon, the bamboo. Then for the sun, we have the sun god Ra from Egyptian mythology. Then for judgment, we have Sun Wukong, which is the monkey king from Chinese mythology. We have some like the lotus imagery on here. Again, lots of nature in the background in addition to like animals and stuff on the cards. Then for the world, we have Hinmoa and Tutankai. This is from New Zealand, a Maori legend. Then we get into the actual suit cards. We have the Ace of Cups. This is 
Matsuo's Sake from Japanese mythology. Then we have the Two of Cups, which is Enkidu and Gilgamesh from Sumerian mythology. The two different kinds of cups, love this. And this legend is about two equals, which I just love like the imagery in this. And the Three of Cups is Epsara, which is from Hindu mythology. And this is a card that kind of represents like a good time, a party, so I love this. And they're like dancing on lily pads, which is adorable. Then for the Four of Cups, we have the Nightingale, which is from Danish folklore. And this is the flower up here. But again, the use of some like Chinese and East Asian imagery. It's stunning. These cards are so stunning and there's so much to find in the cards, I think too, which will be really great for intuitive readers. Then the Five of Cups is La Llorona from Mexican folklore. I actually just saw another artist doing something about this for Halloween, but this is really a card about like depression, self-pity, guilt, regret, and this is actually about a myth of a woman that drowned her children and then her ghost wanders the earth basically looking for her husband to drown but then also will accidentally drown other kids as well. So she's kind of a ghost story. Then the Six of Cups is the Snow Queen, which is a Danish folktale. I believe the Snow Queen is what Frozen was based on. I mean that's my only real knowledge of it, but we do have this really cool like architecture. I like the crow or the raven up here. Then for Seven of Cups we have Aladdin, which is an Arabic folktale. So all of those lamps. And this is a card about choices and daydreaming and decisions and wishful thinking. So great myth to go along with that. Then for Eight of Cups we have Moses, which is a Hebrew legend. And Eight of Cups represents leaving things behind. So we do have Moses like trekking out on his own, which again, another just beautiful card. Like some of these myths I'm very familiar with and some I'm not. So I love I love this deck so much. And the Nine of Cups is Taj al Muluk and the Princess Dunya, which is an Arabic folktale. And this card is about achieving a happy ending in unexpected ways. And Ten of Cups is Jilnar the Seaborn, which is an Arabic folktale. And this is a card really about fulfillment and just like a happy life and harmony and like domestic bliss and stuff. So I love the combination of like the family here, the family here, harmony, these like mermaid kind of people. I'm not really familiar with this myth, but you can kind of get a lot even from this card. Then we have the Page of Cups, which is Bakunawa and the Seven Moons from Filipino mythology. Love this little rabbit. And pages are usually about like new beginnings, like fresh starts, um, you know, diving into a new project, things like that. So this is really cute. Then the Knight of Cups, is Halibu the Hunter from Mongolian legend. And knights are usually much more like action type cards, so him being on a horse is probably going to be a theme that you might see through more knight cards as well. And the Queen of Cups is Yemojai. This is from Nigeria, which is a Yoruba deity. So another mermaid type card. And the King of Cups is the Boy and the Dragon Pearl. This is a Chinese legend, so I love this dragon. Then in this deck we have coins instead of pentacles. Sometimes we have one or the other. For Ace of Coins we have Jack and the Beanstalk, which is an English fairy tale that a lot of people are familiar with. So again, Ace cards are about like new beginnings and things, so this is like new business, money, investments. Coin cards or pentacle cards are much more about like material things, material world, things like that. Two of Coins is Repishut, which is from the Pacific Northwest in Haida mythology. And this is a balance card, and you can definitely see that from the imagery here with the two little kids that are like half bear. Then we have Bashrakai and Banshrakini. And this is from Nepal. This is a Tamang mythology. And the Four of Coins is the Condor's Wife. And this is from Peru. This is a, a, a Mara folktale. And this is a card kind of about hoarding and possessiveness and financial stability and materialism. And you can definitely see that from the imagery here with the Condor like protecting the coins and the woman. Then for Five of Coins, we have the Little Match Girl, which is a Danish fairy tale. I feel like this is a story that I heard as a kid, I think around Christmas. So this image of like the church window and this little girl like begging outside. This is definitely about like adversity, isolation, you know, financial hardship. Then this is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck, I mean, I love so many of them, but Six of Coins is the woman who is kind to insects, and this is a Inuit fable. I love the little fox, I love the little insects, I just, I love everything about this. Seven of Coins is Nana Huatzin, which is from Aztec mythology in Mexico. Again, kind of love the duality of this card. Eight of Coins is Six Swans, which is a German fairy tale. This is about termination and craftsmanship and ambition. I believe this is the folktale that the Julie Marillier 
story is based on one of her first books that I'm forgetting the name of right now. And the Nine of Coins is a legend of the watermelon, which is a Vietnamese legend. Again, I just love the symbolism in here. And you can kind of see here that this is more of like the pentacle design. Ten of Coins is Pan Hu, which is a Yao legend from China. Then Page of Coins is Yevini Nieda, which is a Sami deity from Sweden, which is the indigenous people in Sweden. So loving again those white stags. Then we have Knight of Coins, which is Hitsi Ibib, which is a South African Bitcoin deity. And again, I'd said before that the knights are usually going to be mounted. And so they are riding this like sacred cow. Then Queen of Coins is Wara Muru Ingunji which is one of the longest names I've ever heard. That's all one word. And this is from Northern Australia. It's a Gunwingju deity. Then the King of Coins is Ha Nu Na, which is the world turtle from Iroquois mythology. And this is one I'm slightly familiar with as well. I love this card. And we're entering the sword cards and this is the Ace of Swords. This is the Gordian Knot from Greek legend. Again, new projects, assertiveness, creative thinking, clarity. Swords are much more about like that kind of like thought and, and quick action. Not quite as quick as like the wands, which we'll get to at the end, but still up there. Sword card is a little brutal. So I know there's some stuff in here that is going to be a little bit more brutal imagery than some of these other ones have been. The Two of Swords is Sita from a Hindu epic. And this is a balancing kind of like choice card. This is being stuck between two hard choices. This is a card I actually pull a lot in my current deck, so we'll see how this deck goes for me and we'll see what kind of deck this is. But for Three of Swords, this is the Crane Wife from Japanese Fairy Tale. This is a card about like heartbreak, betrayal, um, sadness, grief, things like that. So this is one. Usually you have somebody or something like stabbed with three swords, so continue that imagery here. This next card is actually a card that made me get this deck. It's the Four of Swords, and this is Fenrir from Norse mythology, the wolf. So all the swords like this, like this image was just so evocative. And this is actually about sanctuary and meditation and passivity and counseling. So, you know, like he's tied up. He can't, you know, he can't do anything right now. But I, for some reason, just really was drawn to this card when I saw it. And for the Five of Swords, we have Osiris, Set, and Isis. I was obsessed with Egyptian mythology as a child, so I loved seeing some of these myths in here, obviously. I mean, so many myths are included. But this is a card about betrayal, surrender, bullying, violence, crime. So there's a lot a lot going on in this card. Like I said, I figured the swords cards would be a little bit more brutal. Then we have Six of Swords, and that is Danae and Perseus from Greek mythology. And yes, this is the same th Perseus that will eventually defeat Medusa. Then another card I love a lot. This is the Seven of Swords, which is Coyote from Salish Legend in the Pacific Northwest. This is a card about strategy. You know, Coyote is a trickster god, so cunning, manipulation, cheating, thievery. Then we have the Eight of Swords, which is Donkey Skin, which is a French fairy tale that I'm not actually familiar with. But this is about anxiety, feeling trapped, paralysis, crisis. Sword cards don't come to play. Then for Nine of Swords, we have Oedipus from Greek mythology. If you guys are into any kind of psychology, you will know Oedipus Complex from psychology and Freud. So, but this is about anxiety, terror, obsession, insomnia. This is obviously the Oracle of Delphi up here. Then for the Ten of Swords, we have Sedna, which is from Inuit mythology. This is another card of backstabbing, betrayal, bitterness, hitting rock bottom. Like I said, sword cards don't play. Apparently, Sedna was killed by her father and he pushed her out of the canoe and then she sinks to the bottom of the ocean and becomes consumed with wrath. The Page of Swords is Princess Parazade, which is another Arabic folktale. This is about curiosity, thoughtfulness, truthfulness. Ooh, I'm glad all the knight cards are mounted, just as I thought they'd be. This is Hang Twa from Malaysian Legend, or the Knight of Swords, which is a card about intellect, bravery, and being action-oriented. For this Queen of Swords, we do you expect anything other than fierceness. This is Turandot from an Arabic folktale, but again, some more like Chinese type imagery. So beautiful. Queen of Swords is a fierce and exacting force, the book says. This is about skepticism, tough love, intelligence, protection. And then the King of Swords is a griffin from Persian mythology. It's a very popular uh, mythological creature, so stunning with these colors. And lastly, we have the wands. So for Ace of Wands, we have the Magic Paintbrush, which is a Chinese folktale. Again, wands and ace cards are going to be, represent creative force, inspiration, excitement, new beginnings. Two of wands is Janus from Roman mythology. This is about decisions, travel, business, future planning, and cooperation, which you can kind of see with the two different wands that he has. Then the three of wands is the enchanted pig from Romanian fairy tales. This is a card that re represents hard work and travel, about self-motivation, freedom, and reward, and romance. I love 
again, I love the imagery here in the backgrounds. Four of Wands is Mohini and Aravan from a Sanskrit epic poem. It's about reunion, success, happiness, family, pride. Wand cards are obviously a little bit nicer than the sword cards. <laughs> I say this and then we get to one of the more aggressive wand cards. So this is the Five of Wands. This is the Pot of Wands, which is from a Sanskrit epic poem as well. These are five brothers who are warriors. So this is about rivalry, opponents, disagreement, and competition. And for the Six of Wands, we have Yananga, which is a Moshi legend. This card represents victory, praise, achievement, reward, fame. Then we have a legend I wasn't really expecting to see, but I love that it's included. This is for Seven of Wands, John Henry, which is an American folktale that a lot of Americans are probably really familiar with from childhood. This is about standing up to insurmountable odds, endurance, perseverance, fighting for beliefs. Then for the Eight of Wands, we have Rainbow Crow. And this is disputed, they say, but this is supposedly a Lenape legend. And this is a card about quick, decisive action, speed, momentum, travel, results. This is another one of my favorite cards. This is the Nine of Wands. This is from Vasilisa the Beautiful from Russian Fairy Tale. Oh, this is so good. So this fairy tale is with these, like, the skulls and Baba Yaga's, like, hut in the background, which is, like, a chicken leg hut. <laughs> like, it walks on chicken legs, and Baba Yaga is, like, a very famous witch in uh, Russian and like Eastern European folktale. So I love this card because this is one of my favorite fairy tales and myths and it's so dark. Then the Ten of Wands is the Timbo Tree, which is a Guarani legend. This is a card about taking on too much and refusing help. This is overwhelm, stress, obligation, duty. What I love about this deck is there's a lot of like darkness mixed with like such beauty. We're almost to the end. So with the Page of Wands, we have Mwindo, which is from the Republic of Congo, Nyanga mythology. This represents childlike optimism and playfulness and charisma and discovery. And for the Knight of Wands, we have Tatterhood, which is a Norwegian folktale. It's a fearless fighter, eager to charge into battle, adventure, passion, a hot temper, a flirt. But again, love that they've all been mounted. And we have the Queen of Wands, which is Pele from Hawaii. This is a Hawaiian deity. She's about optimism, a fiery force. She's a volcano goddess. And lastly, we have the King of Wands, which is the Phoenix from East Asian mythology. Honesty, passion, leadership, charm, flexibility. One of my favorite mythological creatures. I love that all of the king cards have been mythological creatures. So that is it for my little introduction to this deck. If you guys are interested in purchasing it, like I said, it will be linked down below. I'm not affiliated with the author or creator in any way, but I really love this deck. It's also not very expensive for what you're getting, just how beautiful this is. I'm really excited to cleanse this deck and shuffle it up and start using it. I'm probably going to do like a deck interview first, but then start using it for other things. I'm really excited to see like what kind of energy this deck has. Like I mentioned, I'm going to combine like my normal intuitive readings with also looking into the myths that were chosen and how they can kind of combine with the message of the cards. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know some of your favorite cards that you saw in here today. And I'm sorry about the pronunciations. Like I said, I did try my best. I hope the background noise is not too bad either because I'm filming this during the day. But also let me know if based on this art style that I love so much, if you think that there are any other decks that I would really enjoy as well. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.